Hey what's up guys, welcome to this new mini series about shader graph. We are going to see how to create some really cool shaders slash effects like the ones you are seeing and some other really cool stuff as well. This is the introduction video that will help you to set up shader graph and we will see how to create this very simple scroll shader with personally generated normal maps. And if you don't want to spend any money on a third party shader visual script, this is the way to go. It's still in its early development, but it's getting promising. Of course it has some limitations, like you can't create an outline shader out of the box, because at least for now you can only create shaders with one pass, or it has no official support for subsurface scattering, or tessellation, or refraction, which is not yet fully developed and it's kinda only available in lightweight random pipeline. But don't worry about it, you can still create some awesome shaders, and if there's still something you need, you can create your own nodes. How awesome is that? And the first thing you need to know is that Shader Graph was introduced in Unity in 2018.1 and will only work from that version forward. Now that you know that, you can either pick the last version or another version. In my case, I'm using the 2018.2.14. Anyway, you can also use Unity Up, which is really cool to manage your projects and your Unity versions. Or simply come here to Unity Archives and download it. Anyway, once you have installed it, you can start a new project with high definition render pipeline or with lightweight render pipeline, which will definitely work too. Once you have created a new project, or you already have one, what really matters is that you have the package manager, so you can get access to the shader graph and the respective render pipelines. You can find the package manager in the window, right here by the way. Once it's open, you can see what package you have in your project and all the package that exist. And we want to scroll down here so we can install Shader Graph in this button. Once the installation is finished, depending on the error you may have, you may need to update your respective render pipeline, which in my case it's the HD render pipeline. Now that you don't have any errors, we can jump into creating our first shader. And you can do it by pressing right click and in create, select shader. As it is now, you can start with a PBR graph, a subgraph or an unlit graph. An unlit shader is great when you are creating something that doesn't require direct lightning to influence the material, like a sprite for example. And a subgraph is a graph that does something you want, some operations, and it will be useful inside another shader, so you can use those handful of operations as many times as you want. But anyway, we are going to start with the PBR graph. You can either double click it or press this button to open in shader graph. And this new window will appear. Now as you can see in this right bottom corner, we have a preview of our shader and in my case, in this left top corner, I have this small window, small panel, with the name of the shader, where you can add public variables like floats, vectors, textures and much more. And we can add a vector1, which is basically a float, and as you can see we can choose to expose or not expose this variable in the inspector. And let's see how this is affecting the inspector, you can press save asset which will compile the shader, and as you can see right here in our shader, it says properties vector1 float. And let's create a material from this shader, you can press right click and choose create material. And let's also create a sphere, so we can apply this material and play with our shader. So basically as you can see our shader only has a float, which doesn't do nothing at the moment. But we can use it to control the metallic property of the PBR shader by simply dragging the float to this area and connecting it to the metallic property. And you can also double click in float to rename it to let's say metallic. And now as soon as you press save asset in the inspector you can control the metallic property of this material. Which is great. But you can also use this float as a slider. Which will allow you to control the minimum and the maximum value as well. as you can see, which is awesome. But let's take this a step further and let's go to our properties panel 
And let's add, for example, a texture 2D. And we can rename it to main texture. And we can push this property to the top of the properties panel, by the way. And if you drag and drop to this area and try to directly connect it to Albedo, Shader Graph won't let you do it because you need that sample texture 2D. And if you don't know, Spacebar is useful to search for nodes. You can also use the right click button if you want. So let's press Spacebar and search for Sample Texture or simply Texture and it will appear the Sample Texture 2D node, which you can choose it and connect the main texture property to the texture input of our Sample Texture 2D. And now Shader Graph will let you connect this node to the Albedo property. And we can choose a texture. I'm gonna choose one that comes already in this project, which is the plastic ridges down here. And now we have just created a texture property to our shader, which is awesome. And if you want, you can also add another vector one to control the smoothness of this material. Anyway, you can press save asset and go to the inspector, control the metallic property and the smoothness, which is also called glossiness and assign the texture to our material as well. Alright, awesome. Now, let's take this one step further and, for example, if we want to control the color of our texture, how would you do it? Well, for that, you can add a color property to the property panel, which we can drag to the top, drag and drop it to this area, and let's go ahead and choose a color. I'm gonna choose a reddish color, like this. And if we try to connect to the emission, we would simply create a lit material. Basically, it would only add light to our material, which is not what we are trying to achieve here. You can erase connections with delete, by the way. What we are trying to achieve here is to control the color of our texture. And for example, we can do this with a multiply node. A multiply node is just a multiplication. It will multiply A with B which is what we want. We want to multiply our texture with the color we choose. And as soon as you connect the color and the sample texture to the node, you can see in this preview that we have basically tinted our texture. And now we can replace the connection we add to the albedo with this multiply node. And here we go, we have a reddish material. But we can also multiply this color with the float. And why do you think it will happen? Well. What will happen is that we basically will multiply the color value, making the material look brighter. Let me just rearrange this. And if we increase this value, you will notice that the material gets brighter, which is cool. You can also change the color to make it look like a bronze color. And it will be cool to control this variable in the inspector. And we can do it by simply right clicking on the vector one and convert it to a property just like this. And now you can rename it to something like color intensity or color brightness. Basically, to a certain extent, this is just like creating an HDR color. Let's save the shader and go to the inspector. And now you can play around with the color and choose its own intensity. And just to show that this is similar to HDR colors, we can actually switch this color property to a HDR mode. And it will basically let you control the intensity. Anyway, and we can do basically a lot of stuff with this. For instance, let's take it another step further and let's make this texture scroll. And as you can see, we don't have any node that's called a pan or a scroll node, but we have a node called tiling and offset, which we can connect to the UV input of the sample texture 2D. And basically the tiling is the size of the texture which you can also create a public vector too to control the size of your texture if you want, for example. But we are trying to make the text scroll. So we are going to use the offset input. And to make it scroll, we will need a time node, which we can use to multiply the time with a vector two, allowing us to control the X and Y speed of the scroll. And connect this to the offset input. So basically, if we set a value of 0.5 in the Y axis, we can see in the multiply preview that the texture is scrolling already, which is pretty cool. And as you can see, the Y controls the vertical speed scroll and the X controls the speed horizontally. Alright, cool. Now, 
let's go ahead and press save and as you can see it's always scrolling and we will fix that in a moment by making that vector to public so you can control it in the inspector but for now let's do something really cool because as you can see the reflections have no details and we can create normal maps directly from this texture basically there is a node that will generate normal maps with a given texture and it's called the normal create node and we can connect the main texture property to the input texture of our normal create node and it will automatically generate the normal maps which is pretty cool and as you may notice we can control the strength of our normal maps let's connect this to the normal property of our PBR master shader and as soon as you do it you can see that the reflections now have gained some cool details and we can increase that value in the strength of the normal create node and if you save it this as it is you will notice that only the texture is scrolling well the fix for this is really simple we only need to connect the tiling and offset node to the UV input of the normal create node and as soon as you save it you will notice that now both of the textures are scrolling and it creates a really cool feeling and of course now we can create the public variables like a vector one for the strength of the normal map you can also play with the offset of the normals I'm gonna convert this to a property now and rename it to normal strength and we can also go back here and convert this vector to, to a property and rename it to the scroll speed as well and now we can save this go to the inspector and here we have a shader that let us scroll the texture control the normal strength control the normal speed the color intensity the metallic and the smoothness properties and you can even do much more a bunch of possibilities are open with the shaders and i hope you really get motivated for the next tutorials because we are going to see some amazing stuff and that's it guys I hope you have enjoyed playing around with Shader Graph. This was an introduction video and there's much more to come, as you can see. Probably the next tutorial is going to be about the portal shader, which creates an awesome effect. Don't forget that all of these shaders are available in my Patreon, links are in the description. You can have access to those shaders and many more effects as well and some really cool packages. Go check it out, it's really worth And I wanna say thank you to all the patrons that support me in the last few months. You guys are amazing, you guys rock. I hope you have all enjoyed this tutorial, thanks for watching and see you in the next video.